three years. 109,440 individual stop-motion frames, 19 sound stages filled with 230 unique sets, and 227 puppets. The Nightmare Before Christmas was a truly Herculean task that was so expertly executed that none of us even thought twice about the tremendous amount of work, planning and talent that went into creating it. Planning for The Nightmare Before Christmas started with Tim Burton's original poem and artwork. Storyboard artists visualized what the story would be, producing hundreds of sketches that detailed exactly what was to happen in each scene. But because The Nightmare Before Christmas was to be a stop-motion animated film, these storyboards had to be especially detailed because, in addition to depicting how the story should flow, they had to show. The set builders what sets and props they would have to build, the sculptors what puppets they'd have to make and the movement they would have to achieve, the camera crews how to frame certain shots and what motion control shots they would have to do, and the lighting crew the type, colour and positioning of their lights. In fact, the Nightmare Before Christmas's storyboards were so detailed that they virtually drew and animated the whole movie before they even began to shoot it. The production design team created incredible sets that featured elaborate textures and detailed cross-hatching, attempting to emulate the drawings of pen and ink artists Ronald Searle and Edward Gorey. They did this by coating the sets in plaster or clay, and then scratching lines into the muddy mixture to produce an etched textural feel, almost like a living pop-up illustration. Set building started by building mock-up sets at one quarter scale to help get a look and feel for how the final set would be. These mock-ups also allowed them to plan how to break down the full-size sets into smaller sections to allow the animators to easily reach all the areas without having to stretch over or lean on the set itself. When breaking down into smaller sections wasn't possible, the mock-ups allowed them to see where they could install trapdoors that the animators could open from underneath the set to allow them to access those harder to reach areas. Jack Skellington had to have over 400 different heads to allow him to express every emotion he had to transmit and mouth every word he had to say when talking or singing. But how did animators know which head they had to use in each frame of a particular scene? Well, to solve this, they took photographs of each head and fed them into a computer. From here, they could select different photos and then run them in sequence and determine which head or mouth position was required for each frame within every shot. This sequence was then printed off as its own unique storyboard, so animators never used the wrong head in a shot or forgot to change the eyes for the three frames it took to make Jack Skellington blink. And this was tremendously important because stop-motion animation isn't the same as traditional cell animation. With cell animation, if you notice something wrong in a frame, you can simply take that frame out, erase it, adjust it, or redraw it. But if something goes wrong with stop-motion, if a camera slips, a light breaks, or a puppet moves or breaks, and if it goes unnoticed or can't be repositioned exactly, the whole sequence has to be reshot from the start. To prevent this from happening, the Nightmare Before Christmas animators came up with two unique inventions. The first was a current level sensing alarm. This alarm beeped when the current being used on the set dropped below a predefined level, thus warning animators that they were pulling less current than normal, therefore a stage light had probably failed. The second invention was a frame storage device with a video screen. This device enabled the animators to flip between the previous two frames they'd shot and the current frame they were working on, allowing them to not only see how smoothly and far a character moved, but also to seamlessly replace a puppet or prop should it break mid-shot. The Nightmare Before Christmas filmmakers also wanted to use camera moves as freely as live action does because having the ability to follow the action with pan and tilt would permit tighter framing and more dramatic angles. This meant other inventions were necessary. In addition to some pre-existing motion control equipment, several motorized track and dolly units with motorized war owl heads were built, as well as four major flying camera rigs controlled by Tondreau and Cooper systems. These new systems not only gave them more dramatic and dynamic shots, but also allowed them to make the camera move out of the way between frames. So the animator could get in and move the puppets, and then the camera would reposition itself properly for each exposure. Camera moves could also be pre-programmed based on the exact frame count and marks the animator had to hit. 
In total, the Nightmare Before Christmas had 14 motion control setups, all working on different sets at the same time. So as you can see, even though The Nightmare Before Christmas was using what you could call a fairly traditional method of animation, an incredible amount of planning, testing and innovating went into trying to improve on that method, making shots longer and more dynamic and movement smoother and more emotive. <laughs>